excuse me. Hey, excuse me. I work for Black Lives Matter. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I work for Black Lives Matter. I'm sorry that I scared you. But since I work for that company, my CEO has told me to come out today and to bring you on your knees because you have white privilege. So if they see that a white person is getting on their knees, that shows solidarity for the situation. The situation. And could you just please apologize for, you know, for your white privilege? Just apologize? I am. I'm trying to think of the right words to say because that's a, that's a big thing to say. It's, it's big. It comes from... It's, so, it's large in this country. I'm incredibly, I'm incredibly sorry about You know, with this country, we have that President Donald Duck, that clown in office. You know... I don't know about you, John, but if there was a man that had a woman on her knees in public, uh, I probably would have stopped to ask them what was what was happening. You notice a guy just walked past them and like it was totally normal. And that's basically describes 2020 in a nutshell. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> OK, I don't know if you guys remember this, but 2020 was the year uh, not only of pathetic policing, uh, absolute fear-mongering over this scandemic. But on top of that, this was also, I think, the the weakest year for white people in general. Like, I, I really, it was embarrassing the entire year to realize that I was somehow a part of these people and we shared some cultural history where we saw, like, this entire demoralization of all things that could be related to Western civilization and whiteness. And I, that didn't shock me. What shocked me was how like every white person that I knew and good hearted people too just rolled over and acted like all the accusations against them were true. And they did things like that, which was stupid. Yeah, I agree. We had like maybe two, uh, two lights at the end of the tunnel there, which was the Jake Paul fight. And then Tom Brady won the Super Bowl again. So we're not down that bad, you know? <laughs> Okay, guys. Well, I'm letting you know something serious, right? There is an attack on white people. And if you didn't know that, that's actually a real and a true thing. As we go into this, uh, the stories today, it's going to come out uh, as something you might already know, but we're going to prove it, that this war against whiteness is not only a war to attack people for their skin color, which is called racism or overt racism, but there's actually uh, another racist ploy that is meant to enslave black people in particular by trying to excuse bad behavior in their communities and trying to justify bad practices. So this is all a racist attempt to continue to screw over people and divide us. And I wanted to bring on none other than John Doyle from Heck Off Commie here to talk about this uh, because John Doyle being white has had a lot of history at least like 21 years of experience so true 21 <laughs> years being white uh i think at least seven or eight years being an honorary black person with my experience in public school so i can kind of touch on on both things with this issue but you never got to the point where a black person said that you could call him the n-word because that there's there's a real thing called the n-word pass i've never had gotten that deep into a relationship with someone i would never do do that word either but I'm just wondering, did you ever get that pass? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I've lost track of how many passes I have at this point. It's at the point where I don't even have to check if I have one before I go out because I know I've probably got one in the back of my pocket in my glove box or something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, um, this gets crazy, though. You know, we saw that that video. The point is, is that people watched it, right? The media and everyone watched it. And the response that should have happened should have been, oh, my gosh, uh, why is this guy manipulating and abusing a woman on the street? Why is he bringing up race? Why is he trying to divide the country? And that would be your response if you were smart. Well, good old media. I'm sure you're not surprised. The media came out of uh, center left field here and decided to fact check this video. Uh, we have this article from Reuters. This is fact check, right? Fact check. Not why was this man manipulating a woman and abusing her in public based off of racial discrimination, but man asking white woman to kneel and apologize is not actually a representative of Black Lives Matter. Well, of course not. We didn't think, like they go into this, look, social media users are sharing this video where a man says he works for Black Lives Matter. Examples of posts featuring the video have been taken seriously. Some tweets, yes, of course it was taken seriously. People also believed that, that COVID was the worst pandemic in history of the world. So people believe a lot of things. Um, and it goes down here to say like, Actually, Black Lives Matter is a nonprofit. It's not actually a real company, and this man's not a real worker. And it doesn't allude at all into here of the fact that we just saw a racist action and also a really pitiful guilt tripping 
uh, which I think has become a serious problem of this idea of white guilt and the problems of making the white culture seem like they are the enemies and evil inherently, right? And that's what this is all about. And this whole movement 2020 was about that. Um, and we're going to break down a lot of this and uh, coming up. And I maybe we'll get canceled for this, but we 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 it's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I don't have kids. You don't have kids. <laughs> We'll be fine. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I think that's really, I think that's what they refer to as, uh, what is it, the no true Scotsman fallacy? Like the idea that you can just dismiss, like, oh, well, he wasn't actually, that's not a real Black Lives Matter representative because the company's a nonprofit and they don't have representatives. He wasn't being paid a salary or whatever. But like he, the correlation between what that person was espousing and what he believes in, like the organization as a whole is like one to one. Like it's the same thing. But just because he wasn't explicitly affiliated, so to speak, then they're going to try and fact check that and dismiss it. I also like what you said about uh, the the white guilt aspect. It's so effective because white people growing up have been taught from infancy that there's no such thing as white culture, that their history is something to be ashamed of. And to the point where like they don't even know what they they are as a group. Like you can't even acknowledge the existence of like white people as a group with interests or with culture or identity, but every other group you can. In fact, those identities and interests are all celebrated and promoted typically at the expense of white people. So interesting times. Yeah, it is. And before we get into that, guys, I want to say welcome back to Slightly Offensive, the best worst show on Blaze TV because we're demonetized everywhere and we've been censored. I've just uh, started giving no Fs and just kind of going hardcore on our topics here because I just actually don't care. <laughs> I, li I just don't care anymore. I'm just going to talk about the things that we're not supposed to talk about because it's just like, why care anymore? They, why give into the censors? These people hate us. Just taking the clown pill. They hate us. And I'm just going to go deep. And th this show is where it is. And, and this is this is actually a show exposing racism. And it's not, there's always going to be some idiots like this is racist and it's like fine if you're that if you're an idiot and you think this is racism then just unsubscribe and leave or you can actually stick along for a fun ride right now maybe like 40 more minutes of fun when we're going to jump into this before we go any further though i got to give a huge shout out i got to tell you guys something insane so obviously it's snowing here uh people have been crashing everywhere i've noticed a lot of cars messed up even trucks because they honestly did not think that we would have this kind of weather or climate. And the problem is the climate is getting crazier and that's why it's very important that you're prepared for anything on your car. And this is why I wanna to talk to you about a company called Road Armor. Uh, they are a new sponsor to my show and Road Armor makes American made bumpers. These are like high quality, high quality metals uh, that give you both protection and style. They are the originator of the smooth steel bumpers since 2000. They're not just replacement bumpers, uh, they actually, are high quality bumpers that can protect your vehicle. This is very important. The Road Armor difference is that there's no substitute for these. They are 100% made in the USA, in Texas, and all products are backed by their lifetime guarantee. They pride themselves on building bumpers to the highest quality style and protection that are suited to various lifestyles and interests. Road Armor's meticulous attention to detail, advanced manufacturing technology, and the highest grade steel provide a technically superior product using the highest quality materials. Their mission is to produce products that are irreplaceable piece of equipment that protects what matters most. And guys, you should check this out and get it for your car. When you purchase this product, you're not only buying a product focused on style and protection, but helping to support a truly life-changing organization such as the American Valor Foundation. This is an amazing company. Go to roadarmor.com, use promo code blaze50. That's roadarmor.com, use code blaze50 to save 50% off your first purchase. That's roadarmor.com, code blaze50. Check it out, get something for your car, protect yourself today. Okay, so let's talk about this. So <laughs> there is a war on whiteness. There's an absolute attack on it. And we saw this happen, remember back in 2017, this came up and we had a, a social conversation. Um, if we can bring up this article here, Savannah. Uh, by the way, Savannah's back. Welcome back, Savannah. What's up, guys? We're back. Finally back, finally back. The simps back. are happy. Yeah, exactly. And that's what, you just made a special called something about pornography. Oh, interesting. You brought that up. Yeah. You know, we just released a, a little video called, uh, what is it? How pornography is weakening or no, destroying you and our country or something. Uh, the, I think I referred to it as a dissertation. We go in through like seven parts, uh, stemming from the background and timeline of this issue, the neurochemistry behind the addiction, the effects that it has on your sexual health, your mental health, et cetera. It's like two hours long. Any men watching, I would highly recommend that you watch it because statistically speaking, you're probably a porn addict. And if you just so happen to feel numb and depressed and pacified in everyday life, I can prove to you because I now am a neuroscientific expert over the course of the last few days. I can prove to you that that's probably why. So I would go check that out. Links in the description, guys. Let's talk about so, so check out his video and check this out. So about in 2017, you guys remember this came out where there were signs being passed out that it's okay to be white. And these were uh, posters that were posted around the country that just said that, right? Which is a harmless statement. 
Of course, the media showed how racist they are against white people as predictable uh, as we'd always expect. And they started writing articles like this, you know, it's okay to be white. How Fox News is helping to spread neo-Nazi propaganda. So now having an ability to accept the fact that you were born in the skin color that you were born into, it now makes you not only a racist, it makes you a white supremacist mm -hmm. as well. So being white and being okay with the fact that you are inherently makes you a bad person. Yes. <laughs> And they said this, like they get into this, right? And this was, this was the controversy that we're going to come off of and get deeper into this. Cause we're still talking about this today. And it was Friday night in early November and Fox news host Tucker Carlson was preaching to the camera about leftists sowing racial divisions throughout America reacting, which they are right. Reacting to an article in the Washington post about a principal at a Maryland high school investigating an incident in which someone posted flyers proclaiming it's okay to be white. Carlson claimed to see evidence of anti-white agenda at play in the post report. The segment was typical Fox fodder, but with the exception, Carlson was pushing forward a meme promoted by white supremacists, and he was doing so exactly as they intended him to do. And guess what racist comments he said? This is so bad. I'm so mad at Tucker Carlson for being a bloody racist. Listen, being white, by the way, is not something you can control, Carlson said. Like any ethnicity, you're just born with it, which is why you shouldn't attack people for it. And the left does constantly, in case you haven't noticed. I don't know about you, but I'm canceling uh, the Fox subscription I never had when I <laughs> when I realized that Tucker Carlson would make such a statement. You're pissed. Tell me, tell I'm me your mad. thoughts. I'm mad. I think it's disgusting that he would suggest that. I, I I don't even know how to articulate it properly. I'm just so angry all the time. I think that I'm gonna go pursue a <laughs> career with Vice or Vox, and I'm gonna get paid a quarter of a million dollars to denounce white people 40 hours a week. Yeah. After we get canceled here, I'll make one of those "I'm sorry" influencer videos, and then I'll just live out the rest of my days in gated communities while you all deal with the uh, blessings of diversity. So who's behind trying to make us feel like we are we are doing something wrong or it's wrong to be white, right? That it's the opposite of being it's okay to be white is that it's not okay. And that was a group called the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, which is about fighting racism and hate towards any group and every group except for white people. So it's it's very uh, convenient. And they wrote that, you know, if you are looking at this slogan, it's okay to be white, and you're unable to separate it from racism and white supremacy, uh, you actually are correct and justified was their terminology. Because inherently in our culture, if you have any sort of pride in your race, it's okay unless you're white. And it's not only good to celebrate your race if you're every other race except for white, but if you are even just okay with it being the fact that that's your skin color, mm -hmm. you actually are probably trying to get black people killed and maybe you share you share guilt in the Holocaust. Yeah. That's what they said. Yeah, no, I mean, that makes sense to me. It's even like that meter that we saw recently that was being distributed in that New York school with the, uh, the levels of, you know, existence as a white person. And the only thing that was basically acceptable is to be, uh, what are they, literally a race traitor and to be not only like um, denouncing your white privilege, but to be like anti-white as a white person. That's the only way that you can be sort of uh, redeemed from the original sin of progressive politics, which is being born white. Yeah. And I'm feeling really guilty about my whiteness right now. Savannah, are you okay? I mean, are you okay with having this many white people in the room? I'm just checking in on you. Make I'm, sure you're safe I'm a still. bit concerned about it. <laughs> I, I do feel a little bit uncomfortable being a minority and a woman here, you know, the only one, but Maybe you should have not entered I'll the make workforce. Do. I'll make you. <laughs> wow, John, get off my show. It's comfortable. First of all, the man invited me. Second of all, it's more comfortable in the kitchen. I don't know. Oh my God. Didn't she just mess something up too? That's what you get for the diversity hire. Yeah, exactly. We we had our we had our quota. It said Hang it on, said, be right back. Let me just uh, slap John real quick. <laughs> um. No, but it's it's okay. But it's actually we we take this in good humor, right? Because we think this is funny, but this is actually serious implications, and I want to talk about some of this. So this this anti-white ideology, like we make fun of it, right? I mean, we have we have our our diversity coalition that's somehow somehow made it off camera today with Peggy and uh, and um, what's what's the names of our diversity? Co Peggy's we, the, yeah, one, we the have amputee. Peggy. Yeah, Peggy the amputee. Robinette. Robinette the non-binary and, and Madison yeah. the wheelchair. No relation to Madison Cawthorn, who's also in wheelchair because that would be ableist. Uh, but those are our diversity coalition. We also have our diversity hire and also you have me who's Jewish 
or everyone thinks I'm Jewish, but I'm not actually Jewish, but I just go with it. You know? Yeah. It works. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's actually affecting people negatively uh, in the real world because people are stupid. And this is what I said about the white people pissing me off um, is in general, I can't believe people bought into this through brainwashing. And in 2020, we saw more of white people doing really dumb things that make no sense, like getting on their knees and begging for forgiveness from random black people for crimes that they neither committed nor, I mean, this is, do you remember this? When everyone came, oh, yeah. they were crying? Yep. Do you remember this? Everyone was like, and they were getting on their knees and they were like, please forgive us. It's like, for what? Yeah, it amazes me that these people, I was actually just having this conversation with my roommate yesterday. Like, it amazes me that these people probably left that demonstration and like went and like fed themselves and like went to work the next day. Like they actually exist. They seriously exist in the world. It's it's incredible. Can we can we get some sound on? I think you can hear it. They're like begging. Someone has a Bible in the air. We're not in God. Yeah. We're not shaming anybody, God. We're just humbling ourselves before you. Yes, Lord. You brought the thunder and rain today, God. Turn that off. Turn it off. Turn off the sound. That doesn't. That is actually. Uh, I would say that would be an abuse against the the Christian faith is to like bow to men yeah. and then uh, apologize and confess things that you've never done, which is would be a lying. Like it's like, oh, I'm sorry for slavery. Never owned slaves, never took part in slavery. In fact, actually probably had disadvantages because I was white, because I grew yeah. up in a society that discriminates against white people legally and openly in things like affirmative action. But I'm gonna get on my knees and hold up a Bible and blaspheme God while also begging strangers for forgiveness. And I'm sad to say that this was a lot of people did this stuff throughout 2020. Yeah, I saw a video too recently. There was this black guy who went on this like spiritual journey tracing his roots back or something. And he found out that one of his ancestors was a slave master who was in charge of selling black people to uh, the, the Arabs and the Barbary slave trade or to the Europeans or like whatever. It's just very funny to me. Like this, the roots propaganda, for example, that we were forced to watch going through public school that white people went into the jungles and hunted them down and, and tied them up with ropes. And, we, and it's like, no, they were basically waiting for us at the docks. Like they were being sold into slavery by black people, by African people. So... Yeah, no, and that's and that's honestly what it is, and I and I and it, it throws me off here because I don't know what this guilt is. I don't know why white people walk around feeling so inherently guilty that white Western civilization has been like the most advanced in the history of the world and like brought modern medicine, science to the to the world, yeah. as if like I'm supposed to apologize, like oh I'm sorry for electricity, like. <laughs> You know, I, I honestly, like, okay. I, and that's, that might sound racist, but it's like, you want me to feel bad. That's my whole point. Like you want me to feel bad about my skin color. Cause you're like, cause of the bad things you've done or your yeah. people. So if you're going to weigh my value off of bad things that like the race I come from did, yeah. then you'd also have to consistently and logically thank me for the good things that we've done, which is a greater list than the bad. And that's why I don't understand why people don't like white people. Cause it's like, and it's also like, where is this idea that white people were the only people who enslaved people? You just talked about the fact that Arabs have been doing this for thousands of years. Yeah. I think it's actually almost a, a form of Stockholm syndrome, which I have to be very careful with this. Cause I don't mean this to be offensive, but white people for the last 70 years have kind of lost our sense of purpose as like a, like a culture or like with nations or whatever. And so having lost that purpose, we're like almost bored and we recognize that we failed to preserve or conserve anything in our actual countries. And so now uh, because of mass immigration and things like that, these narratives that have come to undermine and usurp like traditionally like white culture or whatever. Now you have people that are, I think almost subconsciously recognizing that it's over for us. Like we're not going to flip our countries back. We're never going to have like true Western civilization again. And so they're almost inclined to then for lack of a better word, cuck to these new narratives and these new trends by like literally as a man kneeling to another man and telling him, I am sorry, please forgive me. Something like that. I don't know. It's emasculating. Like, oh yeah, completely. It, it's, 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 it goes into the idea that no races should be bowing on their knees to another race on racial grounds. Like yeah. that's not, that's not a good, that's not a good value. And that's not something I think we were fighting to get out of that, right? We were like going, it's not good to force humans onto the floor to worship you based off of your race. And that's what this is, is it's, it's not enough too that people, we're going to talk about this, that they hate that they're white. It's that the culture is promoting an anti-white narrative, which is true. And I get a lot of flack for for talking about this, I talk about this regularly. Yeah. There's an anti-white, anti-male, anti-straight, anti-family, and anti-Christian narrative that is proliferated through our culture. Yeah. It's demonic and it's racist and it's also sexist, but it's okay because it's okay to be racist in our country as long as it's just geared towards whiteness because then they say, well, because you can't be racist if you're not white because it's about having power. And I go, well, 
if all of the systems of power are geared towards people who are not white, wouldn't that make the system completely racist in itself? It seems backwards to me. Yeah, it's because what you just described there with that list is like fundamentally what American culture and Western culture has like always been about. And so if you can change the narratives to undermine and usurp those uh, pillars away, you can like literally destroy the country. And, and that's, I think, what it's all about. And they, and they are, and check this out. So New York schools, like I said, it's gotten into our education system. Uh, education doesn't really exist in our country anymore uh, in terms of like, I, you know, it makes me sad because actually the arts and literature and things used to actually be something to boast about, like American literature and, and, and Renaissance art and different oh, yeah. things you're going, like in, you know, in Western civilization in general. And now education to me is just like one big joke. Yeah, you can blame that on the Industrial Revolution, actually. Really? Well, eh, <laughs> we'll, we'll go down that road, right. I guess. Today. <clears throat> There's an argument to be made that basically... Um, um, like with what you're referencing there, with what used to be referred to as a, a liberal arts education, things like that, how to cultivate morality and discipline um, in the humanities, that was usurped when things like the Industrial Revolution uh, came to fruition, and then there was a much greater emphasis on productivity and creating things and like the math and the sciences and things like that. And so because of that, um, a greater emphasis was put on those programs as opposed to the traditional liberal arts education. So they needed something to bring to the table instead of just like reading the classics and learning that. So instead of that, they sort of switched into now, okay, our new thing that we're producing and bringing to the table is going to be critiques of all these old things. So our new thing to add to the conversation is that these things that we used to study and have as the pillars and backbones of our society are actually bad and destructive. And so that's how they were able to kind of compete um, with the things that were now being primarily focused in like STEM, I guess would be the way to describe it. So yeah, that's what I got my degree in. But <clears throat> I want to tell you this. So New York, New York City Public Schools, we have this article from New York Post, uh, are asking parents to reflect on their whiteness. Um uh, <laughs> A city of public school principals asking parents to reflect on their whiteness, passing out literature that extols white traders who dismantle institutions. Education officials confirmed to the Post on Tuesday. The woke offensive at the Eastside Community School in Manhattan features a ranked list with eight white identities, which ranges from white supremacist to white abolitionist. Now, of course, in good faith, Savannah found that uh, found it. Um, the actual, let me see if I can get this zoomed in. She found this good old document that they have people reflect on. Just take a look at this absolute racism here. Uh, you want to take the quiz? Yeah. See where you are? Okay. Yeah, let's take the <laughs> quiz. Oh, no. Uh, the Eight White Identities by Barner Hess, breaking down the white gaze. There is a regime of whiteness and there are action-oriented white identities. People who identify with whiteness are one of these. Who are you? So let's, we're, uh, we, have, we have more people in the room. Um, can I use your name? Can I use your name? Okay, yeah, Aldo is John's friend. He's here in the room. I just never know because some people like don't want to be associated with the show. They're like closeted conservatives, closeted libertarians. You know what I'm talking about? Like, like they're in the closet. Locker room talk on the tick. Yeah. Me and Aldo. Uh, okay, so there is a regime of whiteness. So they call us a regime, which is inherently a racist idea. The fact that we are like some sort of like a terrorist, like instilled authoritarian power structure. Completely ignoring all the diversity that we have in our government. Yep. And there are action-oriented white identities. So here we are. Number one, white supremacist. Uh, Sav, I'm going to need you on this too to figure out where you land on this. Because remember, you can't be a black white supremacist, okay? Of course, of course. White supremacist. Clearly marked white society what that preserves names and values white superiority. So this is the idea of a society that preserves names and values white superiority. Um, and that's a white supremacist. Now, what's interesting about this is that I'd like to add is that uh, all of the narratives that currently I keep seeing from from black communities are about like blackness being the ultimate and black hair being the best. And they are always talking about Magic black, black superiority. Yeah, yeah, and black don't crack. So it's just weird that they that the black people believe in racial superiority. I would put a lot of left-wing black people as white supremacists because they believe in the superiority of races inherently. Yeah. And they're and then by acknowledging and saying they're fighting, I would say like most woke black people would be the white supremacists. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, if you like go on black Twitter, for example, the things that they say about their race, they have all sorts of conspiracy theories about like basically them having innate superpowers. Like they're just, you know, once they can usurp power from the United States of America, they can just create Wakanda. And be, and they also, I, I spend a lot of time on black Twitter and they also talk about that they're, they're actually the Jews. Yeah. Yeah. I've <laughs> seen that. Before. That's a weird thing. I got to just say, I, this is the second episode I've talked about the Jews. And so I got to be careful, uh, because, because and no matter what you say, good or bad, somebody's going to get mad at you. But I will say this, I will say this. 
Like I've heard a lot of crazy conspiracies like about the Jews, but the black Hebrew Israelites are probably one of the weirdest Jewish conspiracies that I've ever in encountered. And I've met them on the streets here in Dallas and the black Hebrew Israelites will like actually kill you. And so it's like, <clears throat> and it's like, and it, yes, like, it's like, I don't get what, so it's like, what are they saying? Like they, the real Jews are just a bunch of like violent, like gang oriented, like tribal people on the streets. They really are scary. Like the black Hebrew Israelites are like, Scary people. I, I I see that, but I raise you my favorite black conspiracy theory, which is personally uh, the one where they claim that they were the real Native Americans, that they actually were settling America first, and then white people came over and genocided them and then took credit for everything that they had done. You sound like a Mormon. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. <laughs> I just messed up my TV. Proceed anyways. Okay. I turned, I actually just launched Hulu on my screen instead of actually seeing what was going on. That was a free advertisement. Okay. There's white voyeurism and it's wouldn't challenge a white supremacist desires non-whiteness because it's interesting, pleasurable, seeks to control the consumption appropriation of non-whiteness. I don't even want to get into this. White privilege may critique supremacy, white benefits sympathetic to a set of issues, but only privately white confessional, some exposure of whiteness. Okay. This is all stupid. We can get a look in that after. Um, but I want to tell you guys this, this is alarming. Speaking of black Hebrew Israelites, I want to let you know something very important that, uh, we are living in very dangerous times and in New York and in these places where there's preaching this racist rhetoric that leads people to get attacked and to shoot each other and to hate each other, which is terrible. We do live in a dangerous place. And uh, I don't know if you saw that video of someone getting attacked by a bat in New York. And I got to say, people are getting shot. Crime is up. And that's why it's important that you own a set of, of actual bulletproof or bullet protective gear, such as the vests that come from AR-500. Now, I own these vests because they're both affordable, approachable, and it was easy for me. I didn't own a, a, a bulletproof plate carrier before this. And I was kind of like intimidated. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know uh, like what I was looking for. I didn't know any of the ranking systems. Well, if you go to AR 500 uh, armor, they make buying body armor easy, approachable and affordable. And I'm telling you that for less than a hundred dollars, you can outfit yourself or family member with these life-saving plates. Uh, they even have other things too that are not heavy and lighter options for females. It's really great. For only a few dollars more, you can get a larger carrier and plates with a bit more coverage. If you go to ar500.com slash offensive, you can see the packages that they can offer you. Use the code offensive at checkout for 20% off anything else in their entire store. Plan now how, on how to protect yourself and your family. Get yourself the body armor that we trust, that I trust, that Sav trusts. Go to ar 500 armor dot com slash offensive right now. Okay, so let's jump in this. So we, we talked about some of these things and what's going on here. I'm not gonna get into this, but this is so stupid, right? They talk about white people being privileged and that there's this, they brought this up, right? This says number three, right? Privilege, may critique white supremacy, but deep investment in questions of fairness, blah, blah, blah. I would like to make the example that if we're talking about racial privilege, I think that black people are privileged in our country. I think black privilege, socially speaking, is a real thing. And it's this idea where there's this excusing, um, like in 2020 of the riots and of the violence and of the murdering and et cetera, because they, they excuse it all and they go, well, because black people are angry at police. Yeah. And you go, uh, excuse me, these people committed crimes. We have laws in our country and the laws don't say based on your race, you can kill people if you're mad because police. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they can basically exist with impunity uh, as opposed to to white people who can't do anything right ever. Savannah's already like on this episode going, this is not good. Um, she's just shaking her head going, I, uh, yeah, but this is good. No, but I'm being, I'm being honest and this is the tough question and that's what I wanna say is like, that to me that's actually racist towards black people because if you actually, they say, well, we wanna help the black community. Well, if you wanna help anybody, what you, way you help people is you set standards. You hold people to these equal standards and you help them to reach standards. You don't go into a community and say, yeah, well, we're a society of law and order, but if these, like we're super mad about January 6th because well, a bunch of white people broke into the Capitol and that's evil and terrible and we need to condemn that because they were mad because they thought that somebody borrowed an election from them. And so, you know, so they're, they're evil and you should never riot. But if you're angry at police, then like, and if you're black, then, and you do that, like, then we actually are going to, uh, fundraise for you. Um, if you actually remember that Kamala Harris, we have this article from New York post, uh, she helped bail out this rioter. Yeah. And he was twice bailed out by Kamala, but he, and he, he ended up getting arrested again. Um, a Minnesota man twice built out by Vice President Kamala Harris backed nonprofit group has been busted a third time on felony drug charges. I believe he also assaulted somebody as well. Uh, but meaning if you're not white, 
you actually can get the vice president of the United States, current vice president can raise money to defend rioters who are still committing crimes. Imagine if a sitting Republican Senator raised money to help with the trials and the cases of any of the, as they keep saying, the white terrorist Trump supporters that broke into the Capitol. Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. I got, I got dropped. I got dropped by my coffee company for posting a picture of Kyle Rittenhouse with a link to my coffee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and on Instagram, you can no longer post pictures of Kyle Rittenhouse. It's illegal. It's against their community standards. Really? Inciting hate and hateful organizations. That's hilarious. I almost got banned from Instagram because I took a picture of this girl uh, that I was having brunch with. You know how girls can't just like eat food? They have to like take a picture to let everyone know that they're eating food. So I took a picture I feel of her. personally judged. Right. Well, I took a picture of her doing that and I captioned it, I hate women. And then they like flagged me for hate speech. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Do you know they also, uh, they also flagged a meme with Joe Biden and Chris Farley, who, by the way, is dead. And they say they flagged it as partly false because it's missing context because Joe Biden was never with that person. I go, that would make sense because that is a picture of Joe Biden now and Chris Farley's been dead for like at least a couple decades. Yeah. So that would also make sense too, that it wasn't taken recently. I don't think Chris Farley was at Biden's speech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Freaking fact checkers. Okay. Um, but speaking of that privilege, Savannah made a great compilation. If you can just put that on the screen with the volume down low because we don't want to get a copyright strike. Uh, Savannah made a nice compilation of her content um, that was out there. So remember this, they were kneeling down Nancy Pelosi and everyone was going, do, 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 we gonna kneel down and we're, we're so sorry because black people. And they all like cried and everyone was like, <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually set to the tune of This is America by Childish Gambino. And I basically did a bunch of quick cuts. That's the mayor of Minneapolis. This is a Black Lives Matter person having their wedding at a protest. And I basically just compiled all the riots and everything that we were seeing because I didn't want to forget any of this history. Yeah. And this is like, so if you, for my blind viewers who are currently listening on an audio podcast, this is just like black people, uh, you know, harassing white people to bow down to them. This is my footage. That was good old... Uh, Good old crab man uh, who got turned into a crab. Everyone's stealing phones because of systemic racism, hitting horses because white people are bad, lighting homeless people's, uh, remember when they lit a homeless man's stuff on fire because Black Lives Matter? Breaking in, attacking cop cars in Los Angeles because Black Lives Matter. Um, remember when people were stealing TVs in the name of racial justice? Because Black Lives Matter. <laughs> And they're looting art stores. Okay, so that was my footage right there. So in Austin, Texas, um, all these people were taking selfies after they burned people's stuff down and like blew up cars. Yeah, because Black Lives Matter. Remember, and they, and they were like doing things like uh, like destroying Kenosha, and then Kyle Rittenhouse came out. And you're gonna have to blur that in post of the blood there, Savannah. Just so will you know. Do, will do. Um, but but uh, yeah. So this is this is what we remember. And 2020 really was a wake up call for a lot of people because I just stopped giving any f's because I was going, okay, this is just stupid at this point. Like this yeah. is just dumb. I'm being made to seem like I'm a criminal in my own country because of the color of my skin, while certain people, certain people, young people specifically, are out there breaking in, entering, and destroying the nation. And I'm going to document all of this and show the world too. A lot. Yeah. Some of this is my footage. And then they're all going to be justified for it and excused for it. They're actually committing crimes all because we're supposed to feel bad for them based on their skin color. I have no sympathy for criminals in general. Yeah. Oh man. It's so, I can't wait for our sons to come home from school because, and that's the thing, you know, conservatives have this like kind of uh, I think it's really just a cope, this idea of like, Oh, well, you know, uh, history's not going to be kind to them. And 30 years from now, we're all going to look back on this and laugh at them. It's like, no, because they have the power, so they're going to write the narratives. And so what was done at the Capitol on January 6th, which is inarguably basically just a meme, like no one was really hurt. Everyone was just taking funny pictures. It was just totally stupid. That will be documented and taught to our children as something equivalent to like... September 11th. Oh yeah, completely. Whereas all of that stuff will be obfuscated into just being the modern day sit-ins or the civil rights movement or something like that. It'll be it'll be completely equal um, to, to what happened back then. And it'll be like promoted as something that was completely fine. And any mention of it being perhaps counterproductive or destructive, all that will just be completely swept under the rug and censored. Can I also just say this too? Events like the Black Lives Matter protests, which were bad really bad and are being swept under the rug and events like the Capitol riots where we have no evidence that anybody other than, than Trump supporters were killed, uh, at this Capitol, right? They keep yeah. saying a lot of people died, but it was Trump supporters who died and the they say medical emergencies, but I mentioned last time, like medical emergencies, like getting pushed off a wall by a police officer, yeah. breaking your legs and going into cardiac arrest, that kind of medical emergency. Um, 
And they, you know, even New York Times had to retract their article about the officer Sicknick getting killed by a, a fire extinguisher because yeah. there's no sign that he died from trauma. It looks like he died from a stroke yep. later when he wasn't there. Yep. Uh, that's t- still terrible. And he could have still died from the chemical agents, you know, like from trauma or something. I'm, and I'm not, there was not a, you know, that's my point. But the whole point of this is, is that it makes you wonder with events like September 11th and Charlottesville and January 6th, where the narratives are were, are basically written about the event and the facts are never allowed to really come out, it makes you wonder who's really behind all these things and who really did these things because it's like when there's actually serious things, we don't hear about them. We should be talking about BLM to this day. People should be, we should be having investigations. People should be going to prison. The organizers of BLM should be in, in jail and there should be, you know, investigations. And we did none of that. And then- If we were a serious country. Yes, but we're not a serious country. We're too busy talking. We're going to talk about January 6th is going to be used for the next two decades as the worst event that happened in America's history. Yep. Yeah. And it, well, I was there and it wasn't. Yeah, man. And then, uh, oh, who was it? Mad Dog Mattis. Literally everything from the Trump administration has just turned out to be such an utter disappointment. He, I think he was like quoted recently, or there was something in the Washington Post talking about how we need to maintain our presence in the Middle East so that all of the accomplishments that we've had there, such as spreading gender theory and women's rights and democracy to, <laughs> to Islamic people can be maintained. So like, yeah, our sons are going to come home and they're going to be telling us all about the, the heroic actions uh, of the Black Lives Matter protesters. And then they're going to be like, also, there was a recruiter at school today who said, that I should go die in the sand so that Muslim girls can learn about intersex people. Yeah, I have to say this. I actually uh, don't care about the Middle East. Uh, I know Americans have like a really like they have they have like a real love, uh, like they're just always like I hate us because we're free. Yeah, this it's like, George Bush like, patriotism. Just leave them alone. Like yeah. these people like live in mud huts and caves and stuff. And also the Middle Eastern countries that were doing well, we officially destroyed them. Like Iraq wasn't doing that bad. Like they had, no. they're pretty developed. Uh, Iran wasn't doing so bad until we started getting involved with regime changes. These were like fine countries that were like taking care of themselves. Yeah. And we were like, but you need some freedom. Yeah. And we're like, I, I love it. Cause like the Democrats and Republicans come together and they're like, what do you want to do for the next two, 20 years? Kill some brown children at weddings. And yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I love that. I love the, uh, the, the poor, defeated American man. He comes home, he sits in the lazy boy with his six pack, and he watches CNN talking about how, like, oh, we're now going to be teaching children that they should be giving themselves hormones so that they can have their genitals mutilated. And then he switches to Fox and he's like, yeah, the Muslims are the barbaric society. <laughs> Like really, yeah, dude? we got to bring freedom. We have kids chopping off their penises, but you know, those Muslims are the bad, they're bad the, guys. Yeah, they're the crazy the ones. The Muslims get a lot right, actually. And Yeah, and I have great respect for, they have, for the Muslims. Yeah, I honestly, they do. And that's honest. When it comes to like morals and society and whatnot, I mean, realistically speaking, they don't get it all wrong. But I'm going to tell you what, what we were talking about, about the double standard with this, with everything, right? And how it's, it's being manipulated to create real world problems. Terrell Jeremy Starr, a man who is young, he's a young man. And he actually um, called for violence with Pam Keith uh, in his article, and I have it up for, he's a, he's a journalist for The Root, he's a verified person. Pam Keith of Florida told me that Democrats need to give up bipartisanship and that we need to treat the Republican Party as an enemy combatants because they have embraced white supremacy over equality. And then said, the new national security experts told me the Republican Party is functioning like a terror cell. One said if they were in Afghanistan, we wouldn't ha- we would have hit them, either a raid drop or drop a bomb on them. So this brings up the idea that this is where the white supremacy thing is. The white supremacy thing is to label the Republicans as an enemy combatant. And they're trying to say that white supremacy and believing, which is by the way, because I want to trust trace back, listen to my idea. White supremacy makes you a terrorist and we can kill you. But what is a white supremacist? This is somebody who is thinks it's okay to be white. And that's what, like, if you look at the reasoning, that's really where this has gone. Is like, exactly. if you're okay to be white, we can drop a bomb on you just like we did with the Muslims. That's the legal strategy too. It's it's so pernicious because they'll say on the one hand, they'll talk for an hour, punch Nazis, punch Nazis, punch Nazis. I didn't say punch Trump supporters. I said punch Nazis. By the way, new hour, new segment, Trump supporters are Nazis. So they let the viewer connect the dots. They don't explicitly call or incite violence, but they they lay it all down and they allow you to put it together. And this is not only on like mainstream news, even you know leftist streamers will do this too. And they even acknowledge it in private correspondence. Like this is what they're doing. They're laying the breadcrumbs, operating within the acceptable legal framework, but they know what their supporters are going to do to piece it together. They know that they're inciting violence, but they don't care. Yeah, I know. And that's why, and then, and then what's crazy is they go, well, you know, I wonder why we have so much dysfunction and problems in our, in our country. Like w- how do we stop people like this guy from encouraging people to kill 
Republicans and white people, right? He's, he's basically sanctioning the death and the murder and the genocide of white people and yep. of Republicans. And it's like, well, how do we stop this from, you know, why do we have violence in our communities? Well, people are calling for violence. And then they go, well, you know, if you talk about black on black crime, you're a racist. And if you want to solve the problem, you're a racist. So you know what they say? Well, here's how we really fix the issues in the black community. We demonize white people. And then we have this article from the New York Post. An activist is suggesting that we pay criminals n not to kill in Baltimore. Specifically, the primary crime rate is black Americans inside of Baltimore, by the way, that are committing the majority of violent crime. And they're saying the way that we are actually fix the world is for what, who? Taxpayers or whatever's going on. The majority of the country is white. So the goal of this is, is that white people are evil, but everyone, we should pay these people to just not kill us in the streets or not kill each other. This is like the most racist thing. That this headline would literally be like satire on like an alt-right website or something. Like that, yeah. that is so difficult to believe that that's like an actual headline that someone typed up and they were like, I'm journalisming. I'm, I'm doing my job. This is like, I'm clown pilled. Well, and this is what I'm saying. This is, this is the idea of like, of this is the idea of the black privilege. You can incite violence on Twitter. You can call for the, you can call for a civil war. You can talk about killing Republicans. You can label all Republicans as white supremacists and you can get away with it. And you can even hear, they're even justifying like, oh, well, by the way, like they're, they're basically saying these people, these black people in Baltimore are never going to stop killing each other. And they're basically just saying like, the only way we're going to do this is by giving them money, which as we talked about earlier is exactly what they did with welfare of like, well, the way we're going to help black people is by just throwing money Trillions at them and, of dollars. and destroyed, they actually destroyed the black community. And that's what I think a lot of this is. I think a lot of this rhetoric is all just about keeping power and controlling people. And I also think that this idea of white supremacy keeps minorities weak. It does because they're always thinking that they're fighting against some powerful white person. But meanwhile, the white people are bowing to them in the streets and they don't even like wake up and realize that they won. Yeah. I, I would love to have the author of this article in studio and ask them about a story that I read a couple days ago. Or actually, I read it today. I don't know when it happened, but there were these two black women seeing a, a film and I think Georgia, and then they were shushed because I, I guess I, this is the first time I've heard this, but apparently black people like to talk during movies. I didn't know that, but apparently that's something that happens. I've never been to, I haven't been to a movie in a long time. Um, and then they went ahead and upon being shushed, pulled out a pistol and like shot this woman in the shoulder. And I'm just curious to see like oh how gosh. white supremacy ties into that. I don't know. I just like to learn things. So. That is systemic racism. And that's, yeah. that is, that is systemic racism. Honestly, that person should have just kept their shushing to themselves and they deserve to die. And that's where I believe, seriously, I believe that. Um, and that's why like, and you see this kind of rhetoric, this black privilege come out. Like the Washington post says this, right? You see, you love these articles. Locked up at age 15, Joe Ligon became the nation's longest serving juvenile lifer. Now at 83, he is finally free and re-entering an unfamiliar world. It's so sad. And Savannah, I, I, I sent this to you. And what did I say? I sent you this article and I just sent it. And what, what did I tell you? You were like, uh, yeah, he also stabbed eight people. And I was like, oh, that was uh, nicely omitted from and the killed two. there. Yeah, and killed two. Or I don't know if two of the people that were stabbed died, but he, I know he's responsible for two murders and eight brutal stabbings. And it's like, look at him. He's so nice and just a nice old man. He's Gentle just a little old man. man. <laughs> Not his fault that he stabbed eight people yeah. accidentally. Yeah, so it's systemic racism again. Yeah, well, that's the thing. And, you know, he's this gentle old man who's just getting released. Maybe the if they had paid world. him, he wouldn't have had to kill people. You know? Yeah, that's going to be another episode we're going to call. We're going to go through all this stuff and call Just Blame Systemic Racism. Remember that. Yeah. That's another episode. Just blame systemic racism for all the problems in the world. That'll really fix everything. You know what's the way to fix the world? Blame all white people for the crimes of this of history. Keep them down. And then also excuse the crime of black people and tell Tell everyone who bring t talks about it that they're racist while at the same time building large walls around the Capitol building and pretending that Joe Biden isn't dying. Yeah, I think the statistic is that between the years 800 BC and 1950 AD, European men were responsible for 95% of all technological and scientific innovation throughout the world. And so what, I, well, what I would like to see happen is if between say 2021 AD and, and 2100 AD, if we could just like completely eliminate that market share down to like 0% and then just go ahead and get the non-white share up to like 100%, specifically the black share. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna say. And, and this is, but this is where they say, well, you know, white people, like you were saying, that's because of racism, systemic racism that white people made inventions. Well, the Asians have been doing pretty good for most of life, have been pretty uh, detailed if you look at this 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 chart from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, um, it says here that actually Asians make more than white people and on average are statistically and more advanced in IQ and in job placement and prestige in overall Asian people. So this idea of like white supremacy is already debunked. This idea that like Ooh, white people, wrong. that white people are there because Asians actually are the ones doing the best in terms of almost every, every factor and they're not white. Do you know why? F screw you, Savannah. This is literally what... <laughs> 
This is literally what they'll say to that, like the, the black supremacists, the black nationalists. They say that white people allow Asian people to do better than them by those metrics so as to lower the suspicion that they're actually the ones in control of everything. That's what Tariq Nasheed will tell you. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, there is a way that you can get your income to actually get ahead, and it's not by by just crying wolf and saying, oh, I'm a victim that I, I can't get ahead. Well, there is a way you can actually get ahead in life, and that actually is raising your credit score. I'm gonna tell you guys something called ScoreMaster. ScoreMaster isn't credit repair, it's credit science, and it helps you get your points fast. In fact, if you go to scoremaster.com slash offense right now, the average user adds 61 points to their credit score in 20 days or less, and getting your plus points fast can save you a fortune before you apply for a loan or a credit card. If you wanna refi your home or even buy your car, ScoreMaster is even great for mortgage brokers who need an edge and love getting their clients better deals. ScoreMaster is a great way for everyone to get their credit score to advance. I'm telling you guys this, it shows you the score and the consequences that spending too much at uh, spending too much or even of identity theft, no one else does what they do. Enroll in minutes right now and see how many points that you can add to your score. Go to scoremaster.com slash offense, that's O-F-F-E-N-S-E, to find out how to raise your score today. I am telling you, you can save up to $100,000 on your home uh, loan, you can save thousands of dollars on your car loan. This is important, I want you to save money, I don't want you to be a victim and I don't want you to be stuck in this world like that. Please go to scoremaster.com slash offense right now. That's scoremaster.com slash offense and raise your credit score today. Um, and I want to talk about this and this is where you get in this weird, you get into this weird like anti, uh, whiteness. Then you get into this idea that the blacks should, the black people should have like privilege, right? And you go into that, into that people say you can't say the phrase blacks. Okay. I've, I've don't, I mean, there's whites and blacks and there's brown people. It doesn't really matter. Right. People have skin color. I don't really care. Um, are you, are you, a, are you like, upset no, about no, that? No, go ahead. You know? Okay. Um, but I want to say this, that when we get into this, people blame white people for everything. And, and, and this is where you get this tribalism that actually can cause real world problems. Like people wrote here, like why is Hennessy locked up in liquor stores? Um, and people are like, cause there are certain liquors well known and that's commonly stolen. And it's like, oh yeah, Hennessy's stolen because it's well known. And that's why Hennessy is locked up. Yeah. Same like, reason, same reason why, uh, I think certain ethnic hair products tend to be locked up as opposed to, you know, your standard head and shoulders. Yeah. But, you know, and people say, well, that's racist to talk about that. And I would like to, I would like to pull the minority card here and bring Sav into this and ask Sav like, how is it racist to really talk about the real cultural issues in our country? Does it offend you? It doesn't offend me. Um, and honestly, it's only racist because our society has conditioned us to think that these are things that are off limits, that the black community is severely oppressed, that they've been pushed down by the white man and you can't talk about it now because you are speaking from a, a place of privilege. But again, that is something that society has put into place and conditioned us all to think. COVID. <coughs> I yell COVID out before I cough now. Like I, people do Kobe when they shoot, you know, when they shoot like a oh. Kobe. So I, and, and I can't do that anymore because Kobe's not around. And that's actually a really sad story. A tra really tragic. Yeah. But, but I do the COVID too. Like <clears throat> COVID because it's also like gives people a warning that you might kill them. It, it's a warning to grandparents that they might die. You should open tonight at that comedy club. That was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> We're all laughing so hard. Yeah, bro, we? the whole squad is laughing. <laughs> um, here's <laughs> Sav is wheezing. You guys are, you guys are. Well, I would say you guys are a holes because you are what you eat. Okay, it was only slightly offensive. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Uh, but this is the kind of thing too where it becomes in, in the real world consequences is that people talking about this. We had this really cute video. If you could put this up, I thought this was really sweet. Um, you know, you have, there's this uh, couple on TikTok. Uh, they happen to be white. They adopted a black kid. Um, they're teaching their baby to like tap dance. You know, like it's just cute. Like they, maybe they couldn't have, a, I think like a lot of people can't have children. They wanted to, to adopt some, a child. Yeah. They were, they crossed, you know, um, cultural boundaries. They, you ha can't expect that they intentionally adopted a black kid. They, I would assume they probably actually just adopted the kid cause it was, the kid was cute and yeah. they wanted it. They wanted a kid. Um, and Unfortunately, there is a, there are a lot of black kids in the in the adoption system, right? And could have been where they are. And you're going, oh, that's so nice. That's just so nice. Well, black Twitter, uh, you know, Tariq Nasheed, who's a race baiter, is like, white couple gets some tap shoes for their black adopted child. Like, is this racism? And I was like, oh, who's stupid enough to like buy into this bait? You know, well, people are, right? They're writing things like here, uh, like. 
it should be illegal to adopt black children if you're not black. Wow. And these are like, by the way, liked by thousands of people. Yeah. Uh, like thousands. Call it like it is, Tariq. This user said, white supremacist couple abuses black baby. This, I shouldn't be doing an accent. This baby should go straight back to the orphanage from which it came. That has I don't to be know fake. What, I don't know where the dog. These are I not fake. These so I went, no, no. I went through Twitter and I read through all of these comments and I specifically picked them out. They're not fake. These people are really upset because they think that this baby tap dancing, and I believe these parents um, have their own dance company and studio as well, which is why they were teaching their baby to tap dance. Um, this, why was the baby you know, in was the, the orphanage response. in the first place? Well, that, that's the question. And that's why it says here, this is child abuse. Why didn't they adopt a white kid? And, and I, I mean, the last one was a dog, so I don't know what accent dogs have, but uh, this is like Mr. Black X. I mean, these are real things where they're saying that it's, that being white is such a crime that if you're white, you shouldn't even have the right to adopt a kid. Not, not thinking like, oh, that's really cool. Like why are there, why are there so many black children in, in the adoption system? Exactly. Yeah. Why aren't fathers, why is there a problem of fatherlessness in the black community? How is that related a lot to the way the government intentionally screwed over the black people with, with, with. Uh, what's that called with welfare and why aren't they staying? What's wrong? Cultural implications. Why aren't men being pressured or why, is, why aren't they staying with their women? Um, I even saw a based meme that was like, that was like, Oh, if abortion should be illegal, then it should be illegal for a man to impregnate a woman and leave. And he's good. Like, yeah, that's the, uh, that's, that's yes. the, what you just did with the Steve Buscemi thing with like, hello, fellow kids. You're like, I saw a based meme the other day. <laughs> oh, I really, it really was though. It, it had like Catholic people. That's why I love the, the I am Steve Buscemi. Hey kids, the, uh, my fellow based. Hey kids. Oh, check out this dank fire based meme. That's pretty good. Huh? Check out this fire. Check out these fire lyrics. That's why, you know, I think the single motherhood rates, uh, the last figure I saw in the black community is like 72%. And even now I just said the black community, which is a very interesting political phrase because if you actually spend time in black America, there's a lot of infighting between the men and the women, uh, the light skins and the dark skins. Like there really isn't this like cohesive black community that you know, our politicians will preach about, but then they'll project that and say the same thing. Like there is no shared white culture. Whereas what we've been talking about for the last 52 minutes would beg to differ because it's like the most common shared experience of like white Americans is just basically being crapped on for the color of our skin. Like that's been happening to us since at least like the 1970s. Yeah. And that's actually, that's usually the usual thing. It's like uh, the only thing that we all share in common is that we all were probably asked in 2020 to bow. I remember yeah. people asked me, people asked me, which is surprising. Why didn't you post a black square yeah. on your Instagram on blackout Tuesday? And I smart person would write every single person back who asked me that like simply like, because I simply do not participate in <laughs> yeah, I posted something like, when that was all going it. on on my Instagram story because I still have a lot of people that I went to school with that follow me. And I was like, yeah, if this is the first time you've ever taken a stand for something when it just so happened to be part of a social trend, like, please unfollow me. You don't have agency. I have no respect for you. It's just pathetic. I Even even if I disagreed with it and it happened before George Floyd and all that stuff, if they just all of a sudden at their own accord decided that they wanted to do this, uh, that would have been fine. But you have people who have never taken a stand for anything in their entire lives. Their being is basically just to exist exist as an aggregate of preferences for Netflix programs and fast food chains. But now all of a sudden they have this like deep conviction for black America, the downtrodden people of America. And they want to post the black square so as to let everybody know that they possess this conviction. It was very pathetic. Yeah. And that's why I would, I would ask myself the question. So we're going to end with actually answering the question. Is it okay to be white? And, and, you know, and for people that are offended by this show, I'm actually happy that you are. Um, and I don't know why you made it this far in the podcast if you disagree with us. Um, I didn't say anything that, you know, isn't beyond the normal conversation. I don't care. I'm not going to apologize or somehow not talk about race because I'm not supposed to because I'm white. I don't care what I'm supposed to or not supposed to do based off of people that hate me told me what I'm supposed to do. These people hate white people and I'm going to go, oh yeah, you hate me for the color of my skin. And then I'm going to listen to what I'm allowed to talk, so that I'm not going to join the conversation because it's like you. I'm not going to listen to people who hate me. That's yeah. just a period. That's that's what it is. I'm going to talk about whatever the hell I want to. Yeah, it's interesting too because not talking about it because it's so obvious that it exists and there are differences between groups of people. Not talking about it creates more problems than actually talking about it. Like going to, for example, the school that I went to is a very diverse school, and like all the friends that I had that were black or Hispanic or whatever, like we would all joke with each other about that. Like mm -hmm. you know, they'd make white jokes, we'd make black jokes, and it was all fine. We we're all like boys and stuff. It's not talking about those differences that creates more problems because it keeps people in these like uh, these tribes, so to speak. And if you're going to try to exist as a multiracial, multi-ethnic society operating under a democracy, a liberal framework, you're going to have to at least acknowledge that if you want to survive. 
This message brought to you by the ADL. And that's what this was. And I might put it at the end. This is an ADL approved podcast. And so is it okay to be white? I would say, according to the narrative, uh, no, that being white is probably one of the most one of the most negative things now in our culture and connotation. It's one of the only things that can limit you from what you can talk about, yeah. who you can address, <clears throat> where, how, what, how, what level you have to be at to get into a university, whether you can get a job description. I would say even above being a male or anything, I would say that society is geared to make it a crime and actually make you disadvantaged if you're Caucasian. And I, I believe that fully. And I think that's where our society's at. And they don't, no one wants to talk about the secret of the open anti-white hatred that is seeding in the hearts of so many people around the country and it's and, and also the white people that hate themselves are just as stupid and bad so true so true the old is versus ought distinction is it okay to be white no ought to, what is it should it ought to be okay should yeah should it be okay yes yeah and it's just exactly should it be okay i think it's okay but guys i want to remind you if you make it this far in the podcast uh, that, you know, it really helps us when you subscribe, uh, and you, and you go down and you click the links and you subscribe on Apple podcasts, you subscribe on Spotify. It really helps us out a lot to leave us a five-star review. Let us know your thoughts too about this. Is it okay to be white? What do you think about this? This is a very controversial topic. I probably could have handled this a little bit more, um, seriously, but also too, it's just crazy to even like you making this and you're kind of like, Oh, we're gonna get in trouble, but I don't also don't care. Um, and that being said, um, I want to get some great podcast reviews that you guys gave, uh, gave to us here. A huge shout out to sweet RBX, uh, said Elijah is one of the funniest guys on the conservative network. Please watch and listen to this guy goes the extra mile to get us the real facts. Uh, I would say that John would disagree. Yeah. Can we get a fact that. check on the first yeah, half of that? Would disagree with that. Um, I think the, the reason why the show is funny is because it's not funny. Yeah. Like, that's the Painfully. point. Yeah. yeah. That's I always tell you that. It's like, I'm actually not funny. And that's the funny part is that I think I laugh at my own jokes. They're not good. Yeah. And that's the best part about it. It's like, yo, he's actually, that's really hard to watch. Uh, another review uh, use, user said, or reviewer said, S, it's, <laughs> their name is S on these Chinese nuts.com. Uh, can I get the, <laughs> what's the domaddy uh, or the GoDaddy value for that? As that domain? Chinese nuts.com said Elijah does what many of us don't have the balls to do, which is to call out the wokeism propaganda that he is being shoved that is shoved down our throats at every turn. I turn I work at H E B and until recently I hadn't noticed how left leaning H E B actually stands. I work nights and I'm proud to say I didn't wear a mask for my entire shift last night and it was empowering. To say the least, I will be looking for a conservative company we work for. There are more like me. We will not be silenced, John three sixteen. That's so cool. true. So true, John three sixteen. I like that. Uh, I really enjoy that. But anyway, this is John Doyle, the host of Heck Off Comedy. You can watch a special. You can go to uh, johndoyle.com or what is no, it? No, heckoffcomedy.com. Heckoffcomedy.com. You can check him out, John Doyle, here on YouTube or wherever else you can get podcasts. Thank you so much for coming on, John. I really appreciated you ending your career with me today. Yeah, it was so last minute, too. <laughs> a last minute end, guys. Thank you guys so much again, too, for watching another episode of Slightly Offensive, the best worst show on Blaze TV, where we always provide for you not only the graphics that will always stun and will always impress. I don't know if we can end with a quick confetti burst. Confetti for the boys. Confetti for the boys. That's for the boys. We really, really strive to bring you the best thing. My name is Elijah Schaefer. We also always have Sa Savannah, who's safe. She didn't die. And You're alive, guys. Switching yeah, we're the show. Alive. Have a great rest of the week, as always, and may God bless the United States of America. I'm signing out.